Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making the Ashley Clutch by Lynn's Handmade Design. Um, I will be showing you how we go about putting this chain on and installing the bar, the clasp bar. When you open it, there are six card slots as well as two zipper pockets. Let's get started. I've already fused all of the stabilizer and the pattern as instructed. So we're going to start with step six and you're going to have your card slot panel and first you're going to find the centers on all four sides. I'm gonna do that with my scissors. Then in the pattern, she does give you some measurements to mark out on here. Um, so I'm going to mark those now. Um, the first one is going to be half an inch up from the center. And I'm just gonna make a mark on each side within my seam allowance. Um, We'll do that on both sides of the center. Then I'm going to mark a line three quarters of an inch up. Um, this one will be covered at the end, so you can draw the line all the way across if you prefer. And one more time, you're going to do another three quarters of an inch up. And you're going to flip it around and do the same exact thing again. Okay. And you should have something that looks like this. So I'm going to put this to the side for now, and then I'm going to get my card slots. So you should have two different sizes in card slots. These are your regular card slots. There should be four of them. And then these are your card slot bottom, or sorry, bottom card slots. Um, so they are slightly different in size, so make sure to keep those separate. What you're going to do is you're going to measure down a half an inch from the tops on all four of these card slots here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then you'll draw a line. Now that you have completed drawing the line a half an inch from one side on all four card slots, you're going to grab your double sided tape and you're going to place a piece of tape right under the line on all four card slot pieces. And it should look just like this. And then you'll go ahead and repeat it for the other three card slots. Now you're going to take your bottom card slots, so the two that are slightly bigger, and you're going to repeat that on one on both ends. So you're going to draw a line half an inch in from the top and half an inch in from the bottom. And then you'll place the double-sided tape right along those lines with this one, just like you did the other four. Now that you have the double-sided tape on all six of your card pieces, you're going to remove all of the double-sided tape from the regular card slot, so all four pieces, and you're going to fold the edge down to the line. And this is what you should have. So you're going to repeat that on all three other card slots. Now you're going to take your bottom card slots and you're going to repeat the same thing with both top and bottom on these ones.
Now that you have your tops and bottoms folded in on the bottom card slots, um, we are going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch across the tops only on the bottom card slots as well as the tops on all of the other four card slots. So I'm going to do that now. Now that you've top stitched all of your card slots, you're going to grab your card slot panel again, and you're going to place the first card slot, making sure that it's not one with a folded bottom. You're going to place it along the line that you drew, and then you're going to stitch this down with quarter inch seam allowance. making sure that it stays straight. You're going to repeat that one more time with the next line. So you're going to line this up on the line and stitch down with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then next, you're going to take one of your car bottom card slot panels. So the one that is folded on both edges, but only top stitched on one edge. So you're going to lay that on the marks with the unstitched side towards the bottom, so towards the center. And you're going to line that up. So you should already have the top stitched part towards the top. And the part you're attaching should have no stitching on it already. You're going to line that up with the marks that you made within your seam allowance and you're going to sew that on with a quarter inch seam allowance. You should have this so you see here that this edge is folded. You're going to go back and you're going to stitch again with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that you've completed one side, you're going to come back and turn it so that all the tops of the card slots are facing you. And you're going to sew an eighth of an inch up one side and an eighth of an inch up the other side, just to keep the card slots in place where we want them to be. So we'll baste it in. And you have one side of your card slots completed. So what you're going to do is you're going to rotate this piece and you're going to do it all exactly the same again for the other side. this would be your completed card slot. Um, if you like to put a woven label on, now would be the time to do that. So I am gonna put a woven label and I'll show you right where I put it. I like to put mine about a quarter of an inch down from the card slot. So 
top and right along the edge. So I'll go ahead and I'll base that on now. And that's how it should look. So now the next step is going to be to take our card slot side panels. So you should have two of them um, cut to the dimensions indicated in the pattern. And I'm going to find the centers on both of those. Now that you have the centers on both of them, you are going to take your card slot panel and align the centers of the side card slots and you're going to stitch down here. So you're gonna stitch down this at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So let's go do that. Once you have everything stitched on, you're going to open the side panels and then you'll top stitch right down there on both sides. So this is what you should be left with. You've got the six card slots and the side panels are put on. Um, now is the time that you wanna try your cards to be sure that they fit. Um, if not, you can adjust, but now you've gotten all your top stitching done and the wings are on, so you want to try these card slots now. This panel is too big for the pattern, so um, we're going to do some trimming off of the sides here. And the way you can do that, the way I like to do it at least, is I take my main body panel and I line it up with the centers and just clip it for a minute. And then you wanna line it up with your stabilizer piece. So I'm going to line it up with the stabilizer piece. And then I'm going to crease with this tool. And then I'm going to trim off with the rotary cutter right along the creases. So I will do that and come back. Um, if you don't like doing it like that, she does give a very specific measurement that the width needs to be in the pattern. So go ahead and do that. Once you have your card slot panel trimmed up, Next, you're going to create the zipper pockets. Now I have my zipper pockets. They are very similar in size. So pay attention in the pattern to the direction that they should be going. Um, I have snipped the centers of the top and the bottom of my zipper panels. And you'll also need your number three zipper with a pole installed on it. When I'm installing my pole on this one, I like to install it, but I wanna leave it right at the end of the zipper tape. And I'll show you why in a moment. So I like to leave it all the way off to the end. And that is so I can lay my zipper across here with my pole out of the way. If you need to, you can put a clip on the end here to make sure that your zipper doesn't go flying off. You could sew over it, um, or you could always even wait until the end to install your zipper pull. Now I'm going to place some double-sided tape along the top and the bottom that we have snipped for our zipper pockets.
You're also going to place some double-sided tape along the very top and bottom of your zipper panel. Now that you have your double-sided tape on your pocket pieces as well as your card piece, your card slot, you're going to take your zipper and I like to have my zipper installed so that it's going to the left when it closes and to the right when you open it. So that means I'm going to take my double-sided tape off right here. I have my zipper just like that and I'm going to turn it upside down so right sides together and I'm going to align it right across the top here, making sure that it's nice and flat, there's no waves or anything like that. Now that you have your zipper on nice and flat, you're going to take one of your zipper pocket panels and you're gonna remove the double-sided tape from one of those sides and the side you are putting together should be the same exact size of the, as the width of your card slot panel. So you're going to match up the centers. and you should have that. So now I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to repeat it for the other side, just exactly the same way. This is what you should have. Your zippers will be on opposite ends um, and they will, when you're done, you'll fold it up together and they'll end up turning the right way, I promise. So now you're going to sew down this edge as well as this edge with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that sewn on with a quarter inch seam allowance, you're going to go ahead and flip it up and press your seam. And then you're going to put wrong sides together. And I'm going to place a clip at each side to hold, hold it together. And then I'm going to roll my seam and just make sure everything is as flat as I possibly can. And I'm going to repeat that for the other side, same thing. Now you should have this and you're going to go back and you're going to top stitch it an eighth of an inch on either side. Now you should have this. You're going to take the pocket zipper panel and you're going to pull it up here. You're going to match the sides up, remove the double-sided tape and attach it here. So I'll do that for both sides. Here you can either choose to baste or you can attach the next piece and do it all at once. So I'm going to attach the next piece. So this is the zipper top panel. I'm going to place double-sided tape on one side, one long side of each of these, and then I will lay that down centered as well. Once you have your double-sided tape on, I'm going to remove that and 
place this right sides together on either side. Now you should have this and I will attach it with a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides. Now you're going to flip this piece up and you're going to press it nicely and top stitch an eighth of an inch away. Once you have your tops attached, you can go ahead and move your zipper pull in. I like to put mine right in the center so that it doesn't get in the way of final construction. Now that you have your zipper pulls on the inside, I'm going to base down either side on all four. So now I'm going to trim off the extra zipper on both sides. Next, I'm going to get my main body panel back out. Um, we're not gonna attach everything yet. First, you're going to find the centers of your main panel here. And I'm gonna do that by matching up the seams for the zippers. So right here, I'm gonna match up the zippers and I'm just going to snip for the center. Now I'm going to lay my piece along my main panel. Mine is too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of hold my panel here and just kind of make sure everything's lining up. I know I need to do some trimming here, so I'm going to trim these to match the sides. And then I will come back and I will trim the top. The next thing you're gonna do is take out your main panel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place double-sided tape along all four edges of my stabilizer. One eighth of an inch double-sided tape. Now I'm going to next take out my two pieces of Peltex. I'm going to fold them both in half. I'm gonna find the centers on one side for both of them. And then I'm gonna remove the paper on the double-sided tape from both short edges, and I'm gonna line up my Peltex right along that double-sided tape, matching up my centers to be sure that it is centered. Press hard, repeat on the other side. Then once I have these on, I'm going to place another piece of double-sided tape right over the Peltex. Now I'm going to take my main panel that's all completed and you have your sides, side centers marked. 
I'm going to remove the double-sided tape on the long parts of your main body on one side. And I'm going to line up my main panels. Once you have that, I'm going to remove the double-sided tape from the short sides and press down my main body. Once you have pressed your main panels together with the double-sided tape, this is what you should have left. I'm going to flip it over so that the exterior is facing up, and I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch seam allowance on either side, and then I will trim off all the extra. Once you have sewed the top and the bottom together, you're going to go ahead and place another strip of double-sided tape, eighth of an inch, on the interior piece. This is what you should have. And now I'm gonna take this whole thing and I'm gonna place this to the side and we're going to work on our side panels. So I have two side panels. They have heat transfer vinyl already adhered to one side and then they are just my exterior material on the other. I'm going to draw a line at the on the straight edges of both of these. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line on these on half of an inch from the top. And this is what you should have. Now I'm going to place a piece of eighth inch wide double-sided tape along each of these lines. I'm going to remove the double-sided tape and I'm going to fold my straight edge down to the line and I'm going to stitch that on an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that you have the top folded down and top stitched, you're going to turn it around and you're going to have the dart. We're going to work on the dart. So we're going to pinch that together. I'm going to hold it with some clips. And you're going to sew along this line at a quarter inch seam allowance. And you'll do that on both of them. 
And then you're going to go ahead and trim this down to an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And one of your side panels is complete, so now we're going to repeat that with the other. You have your double-sided tape installed along both long edges on the interior part. I'm going to also put another piece on the exterior parts. Once you have your double-sided tape on, you are going to turn your panels so that the dart is facing in. Um, this is my exterior. I know that's tough to see. My interior is the shiny um, heat transfer vinyl, so we want that with the dart poking out. You're going to remove the paper backing from the double-sided tape on one of the long edges where it is along the um, interior. Then you're going to align the center of your gusset with the center marks you have on your main piece. And from there, we're going to pull these pieces up and align the edges along both sides. And I like to remove the tape on the exterior portion as well so that I can fold everything together and kind of clip it and help it stay a little better, hopefully. Once you have that completed for one side, you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So I'm going to start by removing the tape that's along the lining. And then the one that's on the exterior. And then lining up the center marks on the side gusset. Now you should have this. Um, just take a minute and make sure that everything seems like it's symmetrical, um, the, the centers line up, everything looks like it's gonna be positioned the way you want it. And I'm gonna check my bobbin real quick to make sure I have enough. I have plenty. Now what we're going to do is you're going to Pick a side that you want to start on, doesn't matter which one. And you're going to be sewing from the inside here. Um, so you're going to start at the top, and I'm just going to work my way down the bottom. Um, the center is the hardest part, just go slow, take your time. And we are going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. So in order for it to look nice on the exterior, you wanna make sure that you maintain the quarter inch seam allowance right here the whole time as best you can. So let's do it. Once you complete that, go ahead and check everything. Make sure you don't have any skip stitches, um, that you didn't miss anything. Your gusset got every you you got all your gusset in, and this looks looks great. No skip stitches, nothing. So we're going to go ahead and do the other side.
Okay, and my second side is done, so I'm going to do the same. Just going to go around and make sure I got all my seams. My gusset made it. And just kind of press everything nicely. All right, and this is what you should have. So this is the interior, this is the front, and this is the back. So your zippers, when you're looking at each one head on, they both close to the left and they both open when they go to the right. I know it's hard to see because it's all black, but. And then we have our little, you look very pretty today label on the inside. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my bar clasp. And I'm going to separate the pieces by flipping open the lock and taking them apart. Um, I'm going to remove the protective plastic that's on them. Once you have your bar clasp separated, um, the piece with the closure is going to be the back and the piece with the hole is going to be the front. So I like to fit the front on first. And make sure that you push it all the way down until it can't go down anymore. So now you're gonna have this which means you need to cut out this hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace it with my silver marking pen. Once you have traced it, you can go ahead and remove the bar. And now I'm going to punch out that silver mark I've made. You may need to punch twice. Um, I know that my punch isn't long enough, so I definitely need to punch out twice. I've punched this out. So now I'm going to see how my bar fits again. Um, what I want to make sure is that I'm not going to see any of the material through the hole. So I want to make sure I've cut out enough of it, but not so much that you'll see a gap. So you can see here, you can see a tiny little bit of the material and interfacing. So I need to take away just a, a touch more there. Okay. And you'll just keep doing that until you've got it just right. Once you have everything the way you like it, you'll go ahead and reinstall the bar. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the part with the screw holes is facing in. And then I'm going to go ahead and install all four screws on the bar.
Okay, once you have the front bar on, you're going to do the same exact thing with the back bar. You can go ahead and test your So now that the bar is installed, um, you can be done here if you don't want to have any kind of a strap on it. I am going to show you how I add a shoulder chain strap. Um, you could do the same thing with a wristlet strap, or again, you can just have it as a simple clutch and you'd be done. Um, and this is how it opens. And you have six card slots on the inside and enough room for a medium-sized cell phone. There you go. So I'm going to be installing a chain using these little corset hooks. Um, I will link them in the description below, and they are installed using rivets. I'm going to place them on the back side and I'm going to have them just line up slightly below the bar and then to the point where the D ring is just lined up. The edge of the D ring is lined up with the edge of the wallet. And then I'm going to make a mark so I know where to punch my hole. And I'm going to repeat that for the other side. And then you're just going to kind of make sure they look good. Um, I think mine look good. And then I'm going to go ahead and punch those holes. Then I'm going to take my rivet post and I'm going to insert it into the corset hook. And then I'm going to insert that into the hole that I punched and place the cap on and do the same thing for the other side. And then I'm going to set these rivets and there are multiple ways to add a chain on here. Um, I just find this to be the easiest for me. Once you have set your rivets, your D-rings are installed and you can set them inside if you're not using them and you don't want them to be seen very easily. You can still use it as a clutch or you can bring them out so that we can attach a string, uh, chain. So this is the chain that I'm going to be using and I'm just going to clip it on. And you are done. You have now completed your first Ashley clutch. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like and share and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.